Hi, Rich Spazano here from Digitally Fearless, and today I'm going to do a photo manipulation. Did you hear the one about a wolf and a lamb that walked into a bar? It was kind of bloody, but it was only Bloody Mary. Okay, I know. <laughs> it was a really bad joke. But in this tutorial, I think you'll learn a lot of techniques, so let's get started. Before we get started, I want to apologize. In my last video with the boy and the lion, the audio was terrible. I seem to have had a bad setting on my mic and I don't know how that happened. And when I did this recording, the same thing happened. I think I've fixed it since then. And what I had to do with this recording was do voiceover over the whole thing. So if I sound a little bit strange or a little bit stiff, it's because I was recording on top of the old recording. So let's get started. So here I created an 8 inch by 8 inch document at 125 dpi. I didn't want to go high with my number because I'm recording. And I looked up sheep and I found this sheep. And these are the three photos we're going to be working with. So the first thing I do is uh, open the bar position and it could be changed later. And, but I think for now this looks about right. And I'm going to do a color palette because I want to make sure the other photos match with this bar's colors. And it's, here's my favorite way to do this. So we go to the swatch panel and hit the drop down menu and oh wait no that's not right I'm sorry what I really need to do is save this file as a JPEG so we go file export and hit JPEG and it could be a low quality it doesn't really matter because it's just for color and we're going to name it and I already had one there so I'll overwrite it right now and I'm naming it for color palette now we go to the swatches click the drop down menu in the drop down menu we say create palette from image make sure it says document we only want the palette to be in your document and then we say open image and we go to the image we selected and we open it up and now we could do the whole palette we could do 20 colors if we want but all we want is three so we change that number to three and we hit a preview and my theory is if it's choosing three colors it's going to show us the darkest colors which is shadows the lightest colors which are highlights and the midtown colors which are in the middle so we say create make sure it's a document and now you have the three colors so later on when you bring in the other pictures you can color match to those three colors so let's start with the sheep we'll bring the sheep in so one way to do it is to use the selection brush tool which will rasterize it in the end but in this case I'd rather rasterize it first so I'm right clicking and saying rasterize and trim and rasterize and trim means it's not even going outside the canvas. So now I'll use the flood selection tool and start dragging. The more I drag, the more it selects. And then I'll click add here and see if I can get a little bit more in here. So it brought a little more into it. And then I think a little bit more we'll click on subtract. And we'll take the brush just on the edge here. And I think that's not too bad. Once again, I don't spend so much time because I don't want the video to be too long. And you should really take your time and get it right. But since I selected the outside, I need to invert it. So we're going to click Select Invert Pixel Selection. And now that we have the inside selected, I want to use Selection and Smooth. And I just want to give it a little bit of smoothing. Then you hit Apply. And now I'm going to go back up and do Select and Feather. And I want a tiny, tiny bit of feather maybe just one pixel then I hit apply again and now we'll mask it and we'll deselect so now because I did feathering I have an outline where the edge of the photo was so I just need since we're we have a mask already we click on the mask and with black color we start painting on the line because black always hides in masks and white reveals and I'm not really worried about the bottom of the lamb because he's going to be behind the bar but you know what, let me just take a little black brush and just get rid of that spot just in case. So now let's put him in place. So I need to shrink him down and even tilt him a little. He will be behind the glass because he is the bartender. And I might have to move this later. Let's just see how small we, he needs to be and then I can adjust it later. So now let's bring the wolf in. So now let's move him around and see where he's going to end up. Um, I don't know exactly how what position he's going to be in, but I'm going to bring in more than I need 
and then later on I can move him down and most of the side will be cut off. So now we need to make a selection of the wolf. My problem with the wolf is there's not that much of a contrast for the selection to choose. So I'm going to try something. I'm going to duplicate him with Control or Command J. Then I'm going to go to Brightness and Contrast. So I'm going to play with the Brightness and Contrast levels to see if we can get the back to be darker than the wolf. So we play around and it'll be easier to see now. So now we're going to use the Brush Selection tool and we'll be able to select the wolf. It's not going to be perfect, but it is much easier now that I did the contrast on it. So you still have to do some adjustments in the end, but I think it's going to make a nice selection. So let's get it closer. I'm using my Control or Command plus key to get closer. And now I'm holding Alt as I, I get rid of the part of the selection that's outside the wolf. Alt takes away and without Alt adds. So I'm going to try and get this a little smoother. I'm not even going to try and select the edge of the wolf here by the ear and by his mouth because I don't think it will show up good on the bar. I think that's a reflection for, from the picture that was there. So I, I'll won't, I won't even keep that part of the selection. And I think it's close enough. Again, you should spend much more time making the selection. So let's see what I'm going to do now. Oh wait, I don't really like that part. And now we'll go up to where it says select and add feathering. And again, a tiny, tiny bit. We'll just do one point. Now we can go to the original photo and mask it. We hit command D to deselect and there he is. So now I don't need the other two so we can just delete those. So if I move this you still see the other parts of the picture and I don't really need that anymore. So if I right click on his layer and do rasterize and trim you no longer have the rest of it. So we have just the wolf itself and what you see in the canvas. Which is much easier to work with because I don't need to work with a huge file in this case. So I think I'll move the bar over this way a little bit and later on I'm going to get the straw to go into his mouth. I hope. <laughs> so let's move the wolf to where he might be drinking. Somewhere like that. And then we'll bring the sheep back in. And we'll, we'll shrink the sheep a little and move him over. And he's going to be the bartender so later on we'll have to make sure the glass is in front of him. And um, and I really didn't want to cover his eyes, so I'm trying to make sure that the eye still shows when the, when the glass is in front of him. I think I'll bring the bar down just a little bit more. And then I have to bring the lamb down and also the wolf down some more also. And then crop the top to the top of the photo. And that's where we stand right now. Now remember I told you we had to save the bar photo to create this little palette. So now we're going to start color correcting the animals. So let's do the wolf first. If we take the wolf and we do adjust an adjustment layer and we click on gradient map, it looks pretty ugly. But it should only go to the wolf first of all. So now we go to the color red which is the darkest point and we change that color then we go to the color green and that's our midtone. So we drag the color up to the midtone brown like that and we select that. And then we go to the blue, which are the highlights, and we change that color by dragging it up to the lightest color in our three color palette. So that's our gradient map. But of course, we don't want it to look like that. We want to do an overlay in this case and we want to cut down the opacity. So now look at the before and it's completely out of place in this picture and then now look at the after and it's nice and warm. Later on we'll see how much we want to go down or up. So now we want to do the adjustment on the lamb. So what we can do is take that adjustment layer and do Control or Command J and then drag it up under the lamb. And now his color is closer to what we need it to be. Uh, we're going to turn the opacity down of course and um, and maybe we'll even go back to the wolf and change him a little bit, his opacity. And in the end, it'll be much warmer compared to what it used to be. So now I think the sheep is still a little too big. So let me move him around and adjust him 
because he is, like I said, going to be behind the bar. And I will, I want to make sure his eye shows. So let me just check the opacity and so that the leaf is not completely covering his eye. And I think that looks about right. So now that we got him in position, let's get a close up. And now we need to get rid of some of the bottom of him. So we'll, we'll select the mask and with a black brush because black hides, we'll slowly start rubbing the bottom and getting him to the edge of the bar. And I don't want it to be a complete perfect selection, like a straight selection on the bar, because he does have some fur. And some of that fur might kind of blend in with the bar hangover a little bit. So I think that looks pretty good. So that's going to be his permanent position. Now let's take the wolf. And uh, he's going to be drinking, but I don't want him so high like that. I want him much lower. So let's move him down, and I think that's a good position right there. So to have him drinking, we need to bring the straw down. So let's um, hide the wolf and go to the back photo of the bar. And the bar is an image, so we right-click and say rasterize. In fact, I think since we know the bar is going to stay in that place, I'll right-click and say rasterize and trim, so the bar is now the size of the canvas. So now we're going to get a close-up of the straw. And we're going to use the pen tool and I'll start clicking here and here with a little bit of curves and try and just select all around the pen and try and just and try and just select all around the straw. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but it's, we want it to be as close as we can. And we want to make sure we get that nub on the end on the left. So now we click on the selection button on top and we've made a selection and then we do control or command J and it brings it, that little piece of straw onto a new layer and then we deselect and now we need to drag it up over the wolf and now we could show the wolf. He isn't really in a good position with the straw right now. So we select the warp tool and now we have to play with this to get the straw to go into his mouth. Now, if you double click on this line, it will create a line and that will hopefully hold that end part in place as we warp the rest of it because we don't want the, the left end of the straw to move because that's the flexible part. And now we just keep playing. It's a little trial and error. So you drag these points down and you move the curves and you keep playing and, and we keep trying and we're getting there and I think we're almost there and you know what then I'll hit apply and I think that looks pretty good so let's hide that straw and remember where the straw was so we have to get rid of this part so we'll hide the straw and we'll hide the wolf so now we'll go back to the bar photo and we'll use the imp painting brush and we'll play a little and we'll try and get rid of the back the the old part of the straw it's not going to be perfect, but we know the wolf is covering part of it. So let me try that, and then that, and oh, I don't like that. Let's undo that one. And I'm just going to keep playing around until I get, until I get it pretty close. Let's try that, and that. And let's see how much the straw covered. I think that's pretty good, actually. So we'll turn the wolf's layer on again. So now it looks like the wolf is drinking, although I don't like that little bit of white here. I'm just going to take an eraser and give a little erasing on the tip. And I think that's pretty good. Let's pull back. Oh yeah, I like that now. So the next thing we have to do is bring the lamb behind the glass, but actually we're going to bring the glass in front of the lamb. So let's, uh, look, at, let's look at it a little closer and we don't need to bring the whole glass up from front. Let's see how much of the glass needs to be brought up. So we hide the lamb and let's go back to the selection brush tool and we start selecting that corner of the glass and the leaves and we rub a, we keep playing a little. It's coming out pretty good and then just maybe on this edge and I think that's it. So we do control or command J which duplicates it and then we drag it up in front of the lamb. So now we bring the lamb back in and he's now behind the glass. 
even though there's that white on the leaf and it belonged there before, I don't like the white against the lamb. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask it and then with a black brush, because black hearts, uh, I'm going to take away the little bit of white. So now I think that looks a little bit better. And now it looks like he's behind the glass. So when something is further back in a photo, it should have a little bit more of a blur to it. So I'm going to do a live adjustment with the lamb and do a Gaussian blur, and it should be very, very little. I don't want the blur to be too strong. I want it to be as little as possible. Maybe just a little blur, but I want it to be, I want it to be just slightly blurrier than the wolf. So now that we have the blur, let's look at before and after. And uh, it's a little bit, I'm, I'm sure you can't tell on a YouTube channel, it's not as clear like it is on my screen, but I actually think I did a little bit too much, so I'm going to bring it down just slightly. That's what's good about the live filters, because you can go back and change them. So next I'm going to create a vignette. In, the, in my last video, I used the actual vignette that comes with Affinity Photo, and I was very frustrated. There were very few controls on the vignette to make it be exactly the way you want. So I'm going to do something a little different this time. So now that I'm up on the top layer, I'm going to go up to Layer, New Fill Layer. And I made the fill black. You can change it to any color you want, but I want it to be black. The next thing I'll do is I'll make a selection in the center of that layer, something like that. You can use any shape you want. I wanted it to be round. And then I'm going to go up and say Select Feather. And I'm going to feather it quite a bit. And when I think I got it right, I'm going to do Control or Command X. I'm going to actually cut out what was feathered. And now we'll do Control or Command D and deselect. But now, of course, it's way too much. But the one nice thing about this is you can change the opacity. You can change the blend mode, like for example, overlay. Overlay looks pretty good. But the more I look at it, I think I want to keep it black, which was the normal mode. And then I'm lowering the opacity. Wait, I'll bring the opacity back up because I want to show you the beauty of this. Uh, you can make it any shape you want. You can drag the sides out. You can move it any way you want um, so you, sh you can change your shape and focus on where you want it to be focused on. So I think it's nice to have a little bit more control and then what I'll do here is I'll lower the opacity. You never want the vignette to be obvious to the viewer. The whole point of the vignette is to have the viewers focus on whatever part of the photo you want them to focus on. So that's before and that's after. And I think I might make a slight adjustment there. Okay, so that's, that's before and that's after. And I'm okay with that now. So now we go to Layer, Merge Visible. And now we have one photo of everything on top. All the rest can be turned off. So now we have one layer which is rasterized. So now let's give it a little pop. So now we go to Adjustments and curves. And I always like to use an S curve in most cases so I can bring up my brightness and bring down my shadows. Something like that and we can always go back and fix it later. And I think that makes it pop a little. And I think we're done. So if you found this tutorial useful, please click like and subscribe and have a great day.